compute together, question mark, and number two. So, so Lorenzo, you are welcome to, to start your, your talk. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, I, was, I was waiting for the screen. So thank you, Claudio. Uh, now I share my screen. And uh, uh, therefore, I'm continuing uh, from yesterday's talk. And for those who were not there uh, yesterday at my talk, so I want to briefly introduce where the University of Trento is. So the University of Trento... I'm sorry, Lorenzo, the, the, the audio is not, is not very good. So maybe you can check your microphone. Or, uh, may you just cross check the microphone because I do not have a good uh, listening to you. I don't know if other... Okay. So do you hear me now? Yeah, far away in some sense, but oh, it's okay. That's strange. Okay. What should I do? No, just gone, just gone. So yeah. like that is better because the microphone is on. So I have no idea what what could I do. Uh, 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 check the well, Maybe for... it's just my uh, just my my fault. So please go on, and then we will check from other. Uh, participant if they can hear or not. Okay, yeah. Oh. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, okay, as I was saying, so uh, uh, I want to tell where the University of Trento is, so it's in the north of Italy, uh, between mountains, and uh, uh, <clears throat> the place is quite nice, so this is me, this Sunday, so yesterday I show a photograph of me in, in the mountains. It was was Saturday, was sunny, but this uh, Sunday was snowy. So this is a, a perfect time of the year to enjoy skiing. So, and uh, if you like mountains, so we are also organizing a, 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 what was a winter school. They did no longer a winter school because it was uh, canceled due to the COVID emergency, but uh, it, will, it has been rescheduled uh, uh, for uh, June, uh, end of June this year. And the school will be on neurobotic photonics. Uh, Professor uh, uh, Conti is also invited to speak at the school. And the uh, school will be, take place on uh, Monte Bondone, that is a mountain here nearby Trento. And so all of you are invited to uh, uh, join this uh, school. So. So the question was about uh, if it is possible to make light living neurons and optical micro resonator compute together. So yesterday we uh, discussed about living neurons and today I want to discuss about the micro resonator. So the vision we have is to emerge on a hybrid network, both a photonic integrated circuit and the biological culture. So now I have to discuss uh, the kind of uh, photonic integrated circuit we are aiming at. And so today uh, I will introduce the physics of micro resonators and I will show you a few examples of how the micro resonator can be exploited in a, a neural network. Before starting, I would like to thank the, the people in my group who are working or who has worked in the, on this topic, and uh, especially uh, Mattia Mancinelli, Massimo uh, Borghi, Giovanni Donati, and uh, Davide Bazzanella, who borrowed me, uh, uh, Stefano Biasi as well, who uh, borrowed me some of the slides that uh, I will use uh, uh, today. So let me start. So uh, as yesterday, I will try to follow a very, a very practical approach, so going into the practicalities of developing neural networks, very few mathematics. And uh, uh, when you uh, work with the integrated photonic circuit, so typically you have to uh, uh, follow a, a workflow. So where initially you simulate uh, the neural network that you want to uh, 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 fabricate uh, by using an uh, optical model for feed forward or reservoir uh, topologies. Then what you have to do is that you have to translate this uh, simulation into a design of the integrated photonic circuit. Then uh, you have to send the design to a fabrication uh, 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 foundry that will fabricate the, your your design, your chip, and then it will package. And now you are uh, ready 
at the end of this workflow, you are ready to test the structures. So here are a, a example of the naked uh, photonic integrated circuit where you see all the structure that uh, you have designed. And this one is the package photonic integrated circuit. So this flow that uh, it looks like something that uh, uh, naturally uh, occurs uh, uh, um, several times as a, a big problem. So suddenly you receive email that say, oh, your run, which is in currently in production and in, in our farm, in our fab, uh, uh, unfortunately is severely uh, delayed. And so the delivery that you were expecting to get the, the the, 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 the chip by end of February has been displaced to mid of July. So this is one fab. Another fab uh, wrote us, oh, we got an official news that uh, the uh, multi-project wafer where your chip is going to be fabricated has been uh, delayed by one month. So instead of getting the uh, chip in July, you will get in August. So those are problems when you are uh, uh, when you have really to work with uh, farms. And so the scheduling of your time should be readapted in order to uh, uh, face uh, these uh, unwanted and unexpected delay. That can be of six months as, as in this case, or a few months as in this case. So then once you have the chip, you have to uh, set up an experimental uh, uh, um, setup in order to uh, test uh, your device. So here are the typical uh, uh, requirements. So you need to have sources uh, in order to generate uh, your signal. You have to take your device, put under uh, in the measurement station, and then you need to detect the signal, so the process signal by your device. And so you have to run everything. So in our lab, so we, we do work with uh, uh, frequency in the order of uh, uh, 25 gigahertz so that we can face a very high uh, 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 computation speed of a few gigabits or hundreds of gigabits per uh, second. So this is how a, a typical setup looks like. So what you see here is actual the uh, uh, package chip that is uh, uh, connected to the electrical connection that you need in order to uh, uh, adapt uh, your circuit to the learning process, as I will show you later on. And so this, uh, the electrical connection are used to reconfigure your network on the base of the learning process. And then uh, what you see here are optical fibers that uh, through grating couplers, you, you, you use uh, to put the, uh, to input the optical signal into the chip. And then you have other fibers that you use to extract the processor state data uh, uh, from the chip. Everything uh, uh, should be mounted in, in a clean environment and potentially you have also to use a, a, a thermal control in order to stabilize the uh, uh, temperature in the chip, since most of uh, the photonic components are strongly temperature dependent. So then uh, uh, once you have everything set, uh, so then you have to uh, uh, run your uh, experiment. Here are a, a couple of examples uh, where you see in the uh, dashed line. So the data that you provide to the uh, arbitrary waveform generators that uh, uh, is used to uh, drive the modulators that uh, uh, transfer your uh, electrical data into the optical data. And then the green line here is the actual uh, uh, intensity variation in the optical uh, signal that you use uh, to code your optical data and then you input in the chip. And then you see the answer. Uh, the answer from your uh, uh, simple device, uh, how these data are transformed while they are traveling through your device. And the kind of device that we have here is a optical microresonator. And so the optical microresonator for, for us is the basic building block. And uh, uh, since this is the building block, it, it is worth to detail a little bit uh, about uh, what is a silicon microresonator and which kind of physics in this microresonator we are going to exploit in the neural network. 
So as you know, a, a micro resonator is nothing else than a silicon waveguide that uh, is shaped in the form of a ring. And uh, uh, since it has uh, the ring shape, so uh, uh, the with the, the, the ring has uh, to, the, the light in the ring has to fulfill a resonance condition where you have that only for uh, a few uh, wavelengths, uh, so the uh, light signal is resonant uh, with the ring. And what is important for what we are going to say later on is the fact that this resonance condition is essentially settled by the geometry of the ring and by the effective refractive index of the mode that is traveling in the ring. And now you can have a look to the linear properties of the ring mic micro resonator. In this case, we are using the configuration of an ad hoc filter by which the single ring resonator is coupled to, to two nearby waveguides. And so we use one port in the device to input the signal then we get the, another output port, uh, which is usually called the two port, uh, since it uh, is the port uh, uh, by which the signal is going in the true direction. And then we have other two ports, uh, one which is called the ad hoc that we typically do not use. And then there is another port that is called the drop port. So the characteristic of the drop port is to give you a, a measurement of the light intensity that uh, is uh, uh, entered in the input port is coupled to the ring resonator and then is dropped on the uh, uh, output uh, drop port. And so now, if you look at the spectrum of the true signal and the spectrum of the drop signal, what you see is the fact that the true signal goes down uh, uh, when the uh, input wavelength is resonant with the ring, while the drop signal is going up when the wavelength of the input light is resonant with the ring. And so you typically get for the drop or the sequence of uh, uh, Lorentzian, each one centered at the one resonance of uh, your ring. And then by controlling the geometrical parameter, for example, the spacing between the waveguide and the ring, so you can control the coupling factor. And uh, 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 by controlling the coupling factor, you control the width of the uh, resonance uh, uh, signal. And then uh, uh, the, the, you have two other uh, consequences of the coupling of the light in the ring. In uh, one is, is the fact that the uh, phase of the light is shifted while uh, the uh, light is going through the ring, and you can get a five uh, phase shift or even no uh, uh, phase shift, depending on the coupling regime, whether you are in the uh, over coupling regime or in an under coupling regime. But I'm not entering into this detail for now on. This. Good. So those are the linear properties. And one aspect which is extremely important is the fact that when you couple resonantly with the ring at your input signal, it happens that the light intensity inside the ring builds up. And so that means that uh, you get an enhancement factor to uh, uh, the power of the light uh, that uh, you uh, initially have coupled to the ring. So that means that you can go in with a weak uh, uh, signal, uh, uh, a few microvolts, and a uh, macro, micro bar, sorry. And then uh, you do this enhancement factor due to the fact that the light starts to circulate within the ring. So you find that in the ring, instead of having a micro bar of power, you get locally a, a millivat of power. So the enhancement factor, which depends clearly uh, on the Q factor of the ring, can be extremely significant. And so this means that uh, due to the enhancement factor, you can localize the nonlinear optical properties of your device to the ring region. And so what is important is to try to understand which are the typical nonlinearities in a silicon waveguide, or better, what are the typical nonlinearity in a silicon optical microvision. So typically what you do is that you use a wavelength uh, uh, for the uh, uh, light signal that is in the mid gap of uh, the uh, 
a, a, a silicon a, a, a semiconductor. And the reason why is that because you want to trans transmit to propagate your light signal through the uh, silicon uh, waveguide. However, due to uh, a nonlinear effect, essentially type three, so the third order of nonlinearity of silicon, so there are nonlinear effects that set of you. And one which is very important in uh, uh, silicon uh, photonics is two photon absorption, by which uh, you get that at the same time two photons are absorbed. And so that electrons are able to overcome the band gap in silicon and move from the balance band to the conduction band. And so what happens is that by a, a high a, a, a optical power and uh, due to two photon absorb absorption, you are starting to increase the free carrier concentration in the conduction band and in the balance band. And so those free carrier uh, can induce uh, different phenomena. Uh, one uh, uh, phenomenon is free carrier absorption, meaning that the free carrier can absorb your input light. And the second phenomenon is free carrier dispersion, meaning that uh, the free carrier can affect the refractive in a nonlinear way, the refractive index of the material. So once you have the free carriers, then those free carriers uh, tend to relax down. Uh, uh, by a typical uh, uh, time frame that is uh, uh, determined by the free carrier lifetime. That typically in silicon wave guide is of the order of a few nanoseconds. And so they do relax down, meaning that they do relax, uh, they do thermalize, and uh, they do go back to the balance band. But during this relaxation, which is typically a non radiative process, phonons are emitted. And so phonons are emitted, it means that during the thermalization, the local temperature of your waveguide is increased. And so you have that this uh, 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 temperature increase in influence uh, uh, also the refractive index of the material through an effect that is called thermo-optic effect. And therefore, what you have is that the silicon optical micro resonator show, show both uh, 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 type 3 nonlinearity as well free carrier associated nonlinearity as well thermo optic uh, associated nonlinearity. And all those effects can influence the refractive index of the material. So you can also quantify, so you can also model what is happening. And so you can write down the rate equation for the optical field the rate equation for the free carrier concentration, the rate equation for the increase in the uh, 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 waveguide temperature. And what you see if you write down the equation for the optical field is the fact that you have a terms that enters into the equation and affect the resonance position of your uh, 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 micro ring resonator. And so here you have that the a, a resonance, the cold resonance wavelength is shifted when you enter into the nonlinear regime by two effects, one, by two contributions. One is due to the increase in the uh, uh, waveguide temperature, and the second one is due to the increase in the free carrier concentration. And what is relevant for what we are going to, say, to, to discuss later on is the fact that this shift. Uh, push the resonance into different uh, uh, directions. So the thermo-optic effect uh, tends to decrease the resonance wavelength, while the free carrier dispersion tends to increase the uh, uh, resonance wavelength. One causes a red shift and the other causes a blue shift. Then you have another effect that is relevant here, is the fact that you have that the losses in the resonator depends on the uh, intrinsic loss, on the extrinsic loss, but they also depend on the two photon absorption which scale with the power uh, uh, to, uh, to an exponent two, as well as they do depend on the free carrier absorption. So not only the resonance shift in the nonlinear regime, but also the losses in the resonator are uh, uh, um, uh, nonlinear uh, are affected by the nonlinear. Uh, if now we look at, at the typical time frame of uh, uh, those 
certain factor. So if we look at the dynamics of the response of a typical uh, uh, silicon microring resonator, so what do we see is that we have uh, uh, typically three regime that we can exploit in our neural network. So the first regime is uh, 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 associated to the uh, optical lifetime of your uh, signal within the microring resonator. And here the typical lifetimes, depending on the Q factor of the uh, uh, micro resonator, can be extremely uh, uh, fast in the order of a uh, uh, few picoseconds. Then you have a typical time frame, time scale that is dictated by the free carrier effect. So, so the time that takes the free carrier population to accumulate in the conduction band, as well as the time that takes the free carrier population to thermalize in the uh, balance band. And this is uh, in the order of few tens of nanoseconds. And then the last uh, uh, temporal regime is that associated to the effects caused by the increase of the micro resonator temperature, which is typically uh, uh, much longer than the free carrier lifetime. Uh, uh, we can say that is in the order of 200 of nanoseconds. So depending on the speed at which you are changing your input signal, so you have a system that can react to free carrier effects or a system that can react uh, through uh, 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 the lifetime of the optical uh, um, of the optical uh, uh, micro resonator, or uh, uh, through the uh, typical uh, thermal uh, uh, time. Then another issue is associated to the fact that the effect of the uh, nonlinearity on the spectral composition uh, uh, play a, a, a different uh, uh, role. So, as I already said before, so the free carrier dispersion tends uh, to decrease uh, uh, the wavelength, so the spectral position of your reson resonator due to the free carrier dispersion is pushed to low energies, to low wavelengths. While on the other side, the uh, uh, action of the rise in the temperature tends to push the resonance to uh, 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 longer wavelengths. Uh, the care effect, uh, which is significant in uh, a, a type 3 uh, semiconductor, but affects in a very uh, 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 negligible uh, manner the spectral position. And so, typically, what we do is that we do uh, neglect uh, uh, the care effect. So, in the following, we will consider the thermo optic effect and the free carrier dispersion. And we can uh, 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 try uh, to, uh, in a very simple, simplified view, uh, look at those effects as two springs that are trying to push uh, the uh, resonance on one direction or on the other direction. And so we have that the effective index of the mode in the resonator is nonlinearly affected by the uh, input power, so by the accumulated power in the micro ring resonator, in such a way that the thermal effects tend to uh, 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 push, uh, uh, the, to pull the uh, uh, resonance to the red, while the free carrier distortion tends to pull the resonance to the blue. And which one of the two mechanisms is dominant, or which one of the two mechanisms enters, uh, play a role? in the dynamics of the micro ring resonator depends where you are pumping with respect to the resonance, so the wavelength of your input light with respect to the resonance of the uh, uh, micro ring. So let us start by putting the resonance on the uh, long wavelength side of the micro ring. So in this case, so we have the thermal effect is predominant uh, the free carrier uh, uh, dispersion gets uh, 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 negligible, and uh, what do we observe is optical instability. So here is an example. So this is the typical through transmission of one of these uh, uh, ring resonator, and what we are plotting here is the input power and the transmitted power. And what do we see is that as we increase the input power. Uh, we, we see that the transmission is constant, uh, and so we follow this line. And so the more and more we increase the power,
power, the larger and larger get the uh, effective temperature in the micro ring. And so what do we have is that the thermal optic effect tend to move the resonance to uh, uh, longer wavelength. And when the resonance is moved to longer wavelength, so then the transmission of the input uh, uh, signal in the true port decreases. And indeed, what you observe is that at the given threshold, you have a sudden drop in the transmission due to the fact that the resonance has shifted and has, has locked to the uh, uh, input level. And then if you continue to increase the input power, you see that your transmission in the low transmission side stays constant. If you look at the spectrum at the uh, low uh, uh, input power, average input power or high input power, you look at the spectrum, you see that the spectrum at low input power at the average input power do align, but then at the high input power, you have this significant shift, shift in the resonance, which lock to the input power and explain the fact that the transmission dropped from a high value to a small value. And then what is, and this is the reason why it's called optical instability, what is important is the fact that when you decrease now the power, since you are in a regime where the uh, input power is resonant to the hot cavity, so you have that, that in order to uh, 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 cool down the cavity, you have to wait a very uh, a small input power, much smaller than the one that you use to uh, get the initial uh, uh, transition between the high transmission to the low transmission cell. And then when the power couple to the micro ring resonator is uh, low enough, uh, so the thermal effect starts with the resonance cool, uh, and so the thermal effects are not strong enough to keep the resonance uh, uh, resonant with the uh, uh, input wavelength, and you have a shift back of the resonance to its uh, uh, core position, and uh, consequently, you have a threshold to a high transi uh, transmission state, and then you go down. And so what happens is that for the same input power, depending on the story, uh, uh, you have two different transmission states, and this is optical instability, which is typically observed when the input wavelength is larger than the resonance position of your uh, uh, micro resonator. The situation is different when you are using an input wavelength that is smaller than the resonance condition of your cold cavity. In this case, you have that both precarrier dispersion and thermal optic effects play a role. And since the two typical lifetime over which the uh, uh, phenomenal force are different, so what you typically see is that initially the precarrier dispersion are the effects are dominant, while after uh, a, a few uh, uh, tens of nanoseconds, thermal optical effects uh, uh, start to play uh, an action. And so what you do expect is the fact that the, the response of your uh, true signal now is getting dependent on the time. So this is the typical signal that you are measuring with some noise in the linear regime. But then uh, the situation changes when you are going into the nonlinear regime. Due to this uh, uh, balance between the precarrier dispersion and the thermal optic dispersion, and since the precarrier dispersion uh, has a typical time scale of four nanoseconds, while the thermal effects at a typical uh, time scale of few hundred of nanoseconds, what you will have is that in the initial time, the uh, resonance is uh, pulled by the precarrier dispersion, and then the thermal optic effect push back the resonance to its initial position. And now if you see that the wavelength of your laser, so what you do see is that the intensity of the a transmitted light start to go down and then goes down. And so start to go up and then goes down. And so this is a phenomenon that is called self-pulsing. And so the physics and the shape that you expect, so this is a modeling, so the physics and the shape that you 
the expected is uh, similar to the one drawn here. And indeed, if you do the experiment, you recover the typical shift that you uh, were expecting. So this is the uh, an experimental results. And in this experiment, what we have done is that we have insert in our uh, web guide the CW uh, uh, input line, and then we were collecting the time result signal from the, the, the drop point. And what we see here is the phenomena that is called self-passing, meaning that the uh, effect of the precardiac uh, uh, as well as the effect of the thermal uh, uh, optic effect are pushing and pulling the resonance across uh, your input uh, 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 signal. So this is what happens if we have a single uh, micro ring resonator. So the question could be then, what is happening when we put more than one resonator uh, uh, in cascade? So the kind of structure called schistor, uh, where schistor stands for side coupled integrated space sequence of resonators. And here the light gets very funny because what is happening is that uh, now the light can be uh, uh, coupled back uh, to the uh, uh, other wings. So what you get is that you get an input signal that is going in and then maybe can be dropped uh, on this side or can be transmitted, can be dropped on this side or can be transmitted and so on and so forth. And then the signal that is dropped here can be recoupled to the metro ring and resend to the through. And so you have a situation where you get optical feedback between, between the different rings. And then if you enter in the non-linear regime, you have that this optical feedback is non-linear changing with time. So let us see, let us see what is happening. So depending on the wavelength and the and the input power, so you can have a situation where you have a very clear, very nice self pulse. And now if you look uh, uh, to the top uh, with the with the camera to the light that is scattered from the top from the rings, what you do see is where the optical mode localized between uh, 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 in, or within this series of uh, uh, couple micro resonators. And so let us look where the light is localized in this case. And so this is the result. So here is in white is the sketch of the schistor structure and the, round, uh, the, and the circles are the, are the, the micro resonator. And what we observe is that in this uh, periodic uh, uh, regime of cell pulsing, we have that the light is localized, and so we get the coupling between two nearby uh, uh, micro ring resonators. And so what happens in this case is that the light is moving back and forth between the two micro ring resonators, and therefore we do see this kind of uh, periodic uh, uh, change of the light intensity in the drop form. But then the situation changed uh, and uh, you can enter a regime that is no longer periodic, but is getting a regime that is aperiodic. And if you look at, at the number of rings that are coupled in this aperiodic regime, we do see that the rings that are coupled are, are these three rings here. And so in this case, you have that the coupling of uh, three different micro resonators breaks the periodicity of your cell passing and introduce an periodicity. But then the situation is even more interesting if we do uh, uh, enter a, a regime where many more than three rings are coupled together. For example, in this case, we have that this ring here is coupled to that ring there, it's coupled to this ring here, that is coupled to this ring there, that is coupled to this ring here, that is coupled to this ring there. And so what you get in this regime is a completely, completely chaotic regime. And now if you uh, model the system and try to understand why this is happening, so this is the result. So here we have our schistor with all the different rings and due to the uh, resolution in the fabrication, even though you are asking seven microns of uh, ring radius, the, uh, uh, fabrication has a resolution of five nanometer. So they do guarantee you seven micron, but then actually what they do produce is seven micron plus or minus five micron. 
which means five uh, nanometers, sorry, which means that the exact uh, uh, radius of each one of these rings is slightly few nanometer different. But few nanometers for the uh, uh, high quality rings that we have means that uh, the resonance of all those things are not perfectly aligned one with the other, but they are spread in the uh, spectral region. And now you can understand the reason why when you use a similar optical, input optical power, therefore you are triggering a, a, a very similar nonlinear effect, you do see differences in the transmission signal in the periodicity or a periodicity or chaotic regime by depending on the wavelength that you are using. And in the case of the uh, uh, situation where you have only two rings that are coupled together, so what you discover is the fact that when you are pumping, actually, so you are pumping on the uh, uh, short wavelength side of this ring. And so this pumping caused uh, uh, this ring to start to oscillate back and forth and to increase or decrease the coupling between the nearby ring because of the interplay between the precarrier and the thermoptic effect. So then when you move to the uh, uh, red uh, uh, arrow here, that means that uh, you use this input wavelength. So now what you are getting is the fact that you get those three rings here that are coupled together and they start to uh, oscillate and so the signal is moving from one ring to the other ring is going back and then maybe the oscillation is slightly different for these other rings and so then for these other rings the feedback is uh, happening at a different time uh, at, cost, uh, at a different time which explains the fact that now you no longer have a periodic but you do have a, in a periodic uh, uh, trans uh, transmission signal and then in the case where you use the black arrow, uh, the, the black arrow meaning that you are using this web right here, uh, uh, you see that in this case, what you get is that you are pumping many more rings together. And so all those rings start to oscillate and the oscillation develop into a chaotic regime. So you can model and uh, what you are observing and the modeling can be very quite accurate uh, so if you are interested, so this is a paper which shows the modeling of the microring resonator. And then now it's time to see. So since we do understand what is happening in the micro rings, why don't we use those micro rings, those nonlinearities for neural networks? And uh, 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 let me show a few examples of uh, this neural network. So the first one is a neural network that is a standard one, so a fit forward neural networks. So here the idea is to use the uh, uh, probability algorithm. So several times these uh, 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 schematics for the optical neurons where you have an input signal, a weighted sum of the input signal, uh, some uh, uh, weight, and then an activation function that uh, uh, determines the uh, output uh, weather. And so for the activation function, you use your micro the optical nonlinearity in the, in the uh, micro ring resonator and for the weighted sum this is very easy so you use optical capture so you take two webguides you, you place the two webguides one near to the other and so you are able to enter with uh, one signal another signal and then get the sum of the two signals so this is from the point of view of integrated optics a very simple uh, uh, device and now you, you uh, use this uh, uh, built-in block and you uh, 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 design a, a fit forward uh, uh, network and uh, where uh, as shown in these uh, schematics so you have two input neurons then uh, you make the sum uh, a weighted sum of the input and then you have two uh, hidden uh, two neurons in this uh, hidden layer you make the sum of the output okay, and, and then you get that uh, one output output neuron here. So this is the schematics here, how the, the actual design looks like. Uh, we use uh, for inputs, we use grating. We have gratings all over the circuit to uh, simply monitor what is happening in the circuit. And then we do have uh, uh, micro ring resonators, which perform this uh, 
uh, non-linear function. So here we have two microlinear resonator. Here we have one output uh, microlinear resonator. And let us follow the path of the light signal. So we input the signal from one grating, we input the signal from the other grating, and then we do have here a splitter. So a 50% of the input signal from the first uh, port is sent here, <coughs> where uh, uh, also for the second port, we have that 50% of the signal is sent uh, along this arc. And then here we place a max ender interferometer that can be uh, uh, actuated by using thermal interference. So this max ender interferometer essentially serves, uh, is used to change the intensity of the light that is traveling through that arm of our uh, neural network. So that means is we are applying a weight to the intensity of the light externally by simply controlling the temperature. So that it means that we send the signal through a thermal ether that are nothing else than a metallic wire on top of the circuit. So by using this metal ether, therefore controlling the current that is flowing in, so we can change the temperature, we change the refractive index, and we change the balance between the two arms of the mass and the interferometer. So this is where we apply the weight to the intensity of the optical signal. Then here we have another heater that is placed along over the waveguide. And the use of this second heater is because we want to change also the phase of the light. And so we heat up the waveguide, we change the uh, effective refractive index, and we change the phase of the light that is traveling there. And so in the uh, uh, when we uh, apply our weight matrix, what we do is that we change on one side the intensity, and on the other side we change the phase. And then here we have the sum of the two signals, with, uh, the sum of the two weighted signals. And so this sum is a long complex uh, 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 number. And then after the sum here, we get the uh, uh, result of the summation. And the result of, this, of the summation is processed is processed by the micro ring resonator and the output of the uh, nonlinear function is sent along this arm where we can apply weight both in the intensity here as well as in the phase there and then the two uh, uh, output of the two uh, uh, micro ring are summed here and then are processed by the output here and so at the end we do get uh, uh, the uh, uh, output of the neural network. So, in this device, uh, what we have, we have two input neurons, two neurons in the hidden layer, one output neuron, and the device is done by using three micro resonators. Uh, everything is actuated by using 15 heaters, six for the weights, three to tune the uh, uh, resonance frequency of uh, the a, a micro ring resonator and the micro ring resonator play the role of a nonlinear node. So the uh, weight, so the learning phase uh, can be done by a gradient free method, for example, by a particle work technique. And so in this way, so you can uh, process your feed forward network. Uh, clearly, in terms of the actual design, so this is the actual design where we also show, apart from the weight guide, you, you also show all the metallic wire, and then you saw the pad where you have to uh, insert uh, uh, the uh, uh, pad. So this is the design, so this is the actual chip, so this is a, a photograph of the actual chip. Here is the uh, feed forward network, so we have simulated the network, but we have not yet tested this network, so this is the work that, that we will do in, in the next month. Uh, 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 Instead, uh, uh, what we have done is that we have actually uh, uh, characterized a, a, a network that is made by using uh, uh, the concept of uh, reservoir computing that was so brilliantly uh, explained in the previous talk. And uh, this device is a very simple device, very simple device, that is based on a single micro -repression. So here what we are doing is that we are building up uh, a, a, a network that is based on a, a single C 
semitron, micro ring resonator, and then we use time loop detection. So then we use the concept of virtual noise. And what I will show you is that this kind of reservoir computer, compute network works both for binary as well as for analog operations. So let me try to explain you the concept and the idea we had for uh, uh, this uh, uh, reservoir computing scheme. So as I already told you, so we have different time frame for uh, uh, time scale for the different nonlinear effects in the micro ring resonator. And now what we are trying to use to exploit is the pre carrier nonlinear. So typically here what we are dealing with are phenomena that occurs on the few nanosecond time scale. The idea we have is the following. So let us assume you have an input pump that is coupled to the micro ring. And so then the micro ring uh, uh, change uh, its refractive index because of free carrier uh, dispersion effect. And so the, the phenomena is essentially ruled by two photon absorption that generate the free carrier in the uh, micro ring. And then the change in the refractive index uh, uh, is, uh, um, is uh, um, the refractive index change uh, uh, with the, the power of the uh, optical uh, uh, field that you are input. And then this change in the refractive index due to the fact that it's due to pre carrier dispersion is rigidly applied to all the different resonances. And so if you have that the resonance at which you are pumping is shifting, it's going to lower wavelength because we are using pre carrier dispersion, but not only that one. Also, the nearby resonance is shift. And so now the idea is the following to use a pump and probe approach, where now what we are doing is that we are inserting into the same ring also a, a CW probe beam. And what you get at the end is the fact that you are inscripting in the probe beam the non-linearity caused by the two photon absorption of the fan P. And so therefore, in this way, what you get is the fact that the fan beam is affecting the non-linear properties of your micro ring resonator. And these non-linear properties are witnessed by the probe P. And so, for example, in this case, even though initially the probe beam was resonance with the, uh, 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 um, with the resonance of the uh, micro ring, due to the effect of the pre carrier dispersion, the resonance of the micro ring shift, and so now the probe beam is transmitted through. And so this is the idea and the concept. And now the device is the following. So we have an input rating where we insert the pulse pump where the data have been coded. And then the, uh, 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 trust, uh, the input uh, uh, signal is nonlinearly transferred to the CW probe. Uh, and so now you have a CW probe, so it's constant, which is coupled to the reservoir to the micro ring resonator. And then what you get is that in the output, you have that the probe is uh, changing in intensity due to the nonlinearity that uh, has been triggered by the pulse beam. And so now you put your input data on the pump beam, and then due to the nonlinearity, you transfer the, uh, 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 the, the, the information coded in the pump beam in the CW probe. And so at the output, what you get is that the probe that uh, the initial was constant in time, now the probe is modulated in time. And the modulation is caused by the nonlinearity triggered by the pump. And now what you do is that externally, what you do is that now you sampling, you sample your uh, 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 transmitted protein. And so you have a series of virtual nodes that by using a linear classifier can give you the desired pump. So this is the concept. And the coding of data is uh, a, a quite standard coding. So we have uh, vectors that are the input samples. So those vectors contain a certain number of uh, 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 um, 
uh, information. Uh, for example, if you have a, a binary input, so you have only two uh, uh, input samples, either you have zero or you have one, and then uh, you can have a vector that is, uh, so if you have a 50 bits, uh, you have a, a vector that is uh, 500 uh, uh, line, long, and then you use a connectivity matrix that is used to, uh, um, I would say, uh, which is to, 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 to spread uh, the input sample on the different virtual nodes. And uh, for example, you can take uh, 10 virtual nodes. And so at the end, you have the formation of a vector, uh, uh, which has a dimensionality of the number of samples in the input times the number of virtual nodes that you are using. And so one of these uh, uh, vectors is used to uh, produce uh, the input uh, uh, signal that is used to fan non-linearly non -linear your uh, uh, micro resonator. Actually, what you do also is that you scale your signal, which means that you can control the average per power, and then you use a, a, an offset in intensity in order not to have uh, zeros at the input. And then what you read in the output is the uh, uh, probe transmission. And if you look at by doing uh, <coughs> uh, 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 an analysis and, uh, and the, the modeling of, of the system, what you, you get is the fact that the probe power at the drop part is given by this expression. And what is important in this expression is the fact that you have that the output so what the, the intensity of the probe at the output of the uh, micro ring depends on the past, on what has happened in the past. And this dependence is associated to the fact that the pre-carrier lifetime is not uh, uh, zero. So you have that the pre-carrier lifetime within the micro ring resonator provides you a memory. And the second aspect is that this effect is depending on the input fan power through the two photon absorption. And so here you have a nonlinear contribution to the uh, uh, output protein. Then you also see that the output protein depends on the past story, but also to the uh, 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 previous in time uh, 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 signal associated to the uh, uh, so this means that we can couple the, the different virtual nodes between them. So the virtual node time t is here coupled to the virtual node status at the previous time. And so in this way, what we get is that we get the coupling, which is non-linear, between the different virtual nodes. And so this means that within the micro ring resonator, we have a relation that is recursive between the different virtual nodes. And so here, what is shown is that on one side, you have the nonlinearity, and on the other side, you have inter uh, uh, node coupling as well as memory. And so uh, uh, here I'm summarized the, 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 the same thing. So the reservoir operates at the free carrier time scale. If everything here is purely passive, we do not need to use the nonlinearities in the photodetector as in many uh, uh, photonic uh, uh, um, implementation of neural networks. The two photon absorption and the, the internal coupling provide the nonlinearity. The carrier recombination provides a short term memory to the reservoir. And it's, and it's this uh, uh, carrier recombination that uh, provides the inertia that uh, uh, cause the network connectivity. Should note that uh, the current lifetime is much shorter than the thermal constant. The fourth temperature does not follow the temporal profile of the current concentration. So mostly what we are looking is phenomena due to the current lifetime. Clearly, this is valid for a, a power regime that is below the threshold of self pulsing because if we increase the power enough, so then the increase of the temperature is so strong that thermal effects.
that start to play a role, thermal optics set in, and then we do have cell pulsing in the micro -readers. So this is the experimental setup. So we have the line that rules the pump. We have the line that rules the probe. So the pump and the probe are uh, coupled together and then are inserted into the chip. In the prop, in the probe, by using a, a, a arbitrary waveform generation, so we put the data. And then by using a, a, a high speed uh, uh, photo detector, so we are sampling the uh, uh, probe uh, transmission, so the output signal, we are getting the virtual nodes, and then by doing rich prevention, so we can uh, uh, perform the uh, uh, design function. So those are details uh, on the experimental setup. Maybe what is here relevant are the characteristic of the ring resonator. So we have a race track resonator with a seven micron radius and the coupling length of three micron. The waveguide is quite standard silicon waveguide, 450 wide, 220 nanometer uh, thick. Uh, the gap uh, between the ring resonator and the waveguide is 250 nanometer, which makes uh, a Q factor of the ingress race break resonator of 6,500. Uh, uh, and then here are examples of the uh, performance, experimental performance of the ring resonator. So this is the first function. So it's a one bit uh, delay sort. As you well know, to resolve this uh, uh, function, what you need is some memory. So the idea is to make the XOR operation between the bits and time t and then time t minus one. So this is the pump in input, the black line here. Then you have the red line, that is the pump at the output. You see the non-linearity, so the, the transient caused by the free carrier effects. And then in the blue, you see the, the probe at the output. Everything here is run at 30 megabits per second, which is compatible with the typical timing of the free carrier. Uh, uh, the pre carrier in the, in the micro resonator. And here are the, the, the results. So, this is the bit error rates. Uh, uh, when we uh, do the linear regression analysis only on the pump, so we are not able to solve the task. When we do that on the uh, output pump, uh, we, we, we get a, a bit error rate of 5% that degrades when we increase the bit rate. And then, if we look at the product output, uh, uh, what we do observe is that we have a quite long, large regime of bit rates where uh, uh, we get uh, zero error operation. Uh, the reason why, by using simply the pump, we cannot solve the task is because the task is nonlinear separable and then needs memory. The reason why we are not able to solve the task by using only the pump is because uh, 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 each time we have a zero bit in the input, so this zero bit does not carry any power, so it does not affect uh, the status of, of uh, the uh, reservoir. And so then, uh, uh, by using this uh, pump and probe approach, so we avoid to have zero bit state and zero power uh, uh, state. And so in this way, so we can solve this uh, task. When we increase the bit rate, so now the free carrier are no longer able to follow the pump formation. And so this is the reason why the bit error rate starts to increase by increasing the bit rate. Here is the bit error rate as a function of the input power. And what do you uh, what do we observe is that is indeed the nonlinearity in the micro ring resonator that allows to get uh, uh, error free operation here. And so you get error free operation when the input is larger than uh, 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 0 dB. Uh, dB. Here is another task. Uh, this is an, uh, 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 a task that is performed on an analog input. So this is the recognition. So we, uh, we need to uh, uh, catalogize uh, different uh, uh, iris, different flowers. And so we, we need to recognize those flowers. So we have uh, that the iris uh, uh, present three different uh, uh, um, species, the setosa, the first color, and the virginica. So they are different. And you can uh, uh, quantify these, these different by measuring the length and the width of the petal, as well as 
as the length and the width of the signal. And what you see here is that the distribution of for a, a sample of 150 uh, flowers of the sepal width and the sepal length for the 3D point species. And what you see is that this problem is not linearly separated. And so we try to use our system, our reservoir computing uh, network to uh, uh, recognize those 3D point species of flowers. So uh, here is the input power where we do um, where we do input the different flowers. And so we uh, use a connectivity matrix by using 50 neutral points for different characteristics of flower. So we have uh, different flowers in the set which have been randomly provided to the uh, uh, network. So this is the input power variation. Here is the uh, output uh, of uh, power variation. And those small uh, red dots are the virtual nodes where we have sampled the output. Everything is run at 20 megabits per second. Here is the output. So what you see is that depending on the bit rate, so we can get a, a very high classification ratio, uh, where uh, which for 15 nanosecond separation between the different uh, uh, virtual nodes, the uh, classification accuracy can reach 99.3% of what uh, uh, The reason why, uh, uh, so this accuracy, uh, let me, sorry, I'm going to fast. Sorry, Lorenz, time yes. is going to finish. So. Yeah, I'm finishing here. So I wanted simply to comment the reason why by increasing the input power, so we do see that the accuracy decrease. And the reason is given here by this plot. So what you see here is what happens to the resonance as a function of the input power. And what you see here is that if you enter the regime where the set function start to play a role, so the accuracy goes down. So here I'm concluding this lecture. So silicon, I hope you have shown you that silicon micro rings have a rich dynamics. We can use exploit different nonlinearities for different time ranges. Uh, we can uh, use different networks, topologies, and we do believe if the array of micro resonators show a real tremendous computational power. So this was the vision that we had. And uh, at the end, so we wanted to merge the uh, biological culture with the uh, uh, actual uh, uh, photonic culture. So we have designed a, a chip that is working, that is using uh, scattering in the uh, neural network in order to illuminate the neurons depending on the processing of the input data. However, so I cannot show you results because of the delay that I, I was announcing at the beginning. So I invite you sometimes in the future to come and to see whether uh, uh, we finally succeed in making this hybrid uh, neural network. So here I'm finishing. So I thank the people in the group. I acknowledge the uh, 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 different projects that sponsor and sustain this activity. And uh, I'm looking PhD students and I thank you for your attention. Sorry for being late. So thanks a lot, Lorenzo. You gave a wonderful example. So truly photonic neural networks, really, really impressive. So uh, we have time for questions as it's the last uh, talk of the session. So there's some minutes more for questions. So I see one question from Mario. Uh, you can see that Lorenzo in the, in the question. Yes. Answer. This is a very good question. So the question is, how do we sample? So the, the question I can read, thank you for the, uh, my question is regarding the readout procedure of your reservoir computing. For tasks that requires only few readout points, for example, the IRIS task, how do you choose the good sampling points from the entire output phrase? Uh, this is a very good question. So this is something that we are doing. So essentially what we are doing is that we are sampling and then we are averaging over one uh, uh, sampling interval. And the number of virtual points are instrumental to optimize the performance of the uh, network. Here I show a confusion chart where I'm demonstrating that if you increase the number of virtual points above 
50, you do not increase uh, uh, the uh, uh, success rate. While if you decrease, you decrease. Uh, and so uh, you, you, you have to optimize the number of, of, uh, of uh, uh, virtual nodes. And clearly, the more virtual nodes you have, the faster is the classification rate. rate. However, so if, if you want to, to get uh, such a high accuracy, you need to have uh, a, a significant number of virtual nodes for two advances. So that's a bit, okay, I don't see other question, but mm, here yeah, it's a bit messed up. Uh, are all photons, so there is another question, may I read it? Can you see that? Because I have see a little bit messy situation with the Okay. Question. Are all photonic degrees of freedom equally useful suitable for the implementation of preserve one computer, or are there preferable ones? Okay, the photonic degree of freedom, so what, what we have is intensity, frequency, wavelength, resonance, so we have many photonic, and uh, uh, what we are using are those that are, uh, uh, from our point of view, more practical. And so, uh, uh, what do we are using is, uh, as you see here, so we use intensity, we use phase, we use wavelength. We don't use polarization because polarization is not easy to manage on integrated optics. But power and, and the others, yes, we do this. Thank you for the day. In case you, in case you would like to increase the bit rate, the only solution is to explore a faster nonlinearity. Very good question. And the answer is clearly that depends. To increase the bit rate, it depends on your function that you want to implement. With silicon, with silicon photonics, so this is the typical uh, uh, kind of nonlinearity that you can use. So people have used other kinds. So they have used the, the photodiode nonlinearity in order to introduce nonlinearity. And uh, they use very high speed and very high, um, uh, very dense uh, wavelength division multiplexing in order to increase the speed. And uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, there have been a couple of papers that have shown that by using COMB to uh, generate the, the input data, so the, 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 the speed at which the uh, uh, neural network can work is in the excess of teraflops per second. But the nonlinearity was the detector nonlinearity. So here we are dealing with the uh, micro ring nonlinearity. And in this case, if you want to go faster, so you need to use the uh, uh, lifetime of the photon. But actually, for speech, speech recognition, so the free carrier effect is perfect. I mean, uh, uh, two megahertz, very high accuracy, simple device. Okay, so this is a uh, I do not see other questions. So thanks again, Lorenzo. It has been a great talk. So we, I guess we can finish uh, this, uh, this session. And thanks a lot to all the speakers. So please do not, Yes. So uh, please do not miss the, the last session tomorrow because we will have exciting talks about uh, micro robotics, about uh, convolutional neural networks and 3D photonic networks. So I think it will be very, very interesting. So thanks a lot everybody for, for being here today uh, online. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you all.